Gem per Fluido. Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to take a look at the auto rigging software Actor Core AccuRig. You are going to see how it has a lot of customization and we can use it to auto rig our characters with a lot of control. Roll intro. Okay, so with Actor Core AccuRig, instead of a web app, we have a local program that we need to download to auto rig our characters. So you can go ahead and click the link that I will leave in the description. You download the program. Next, you have to install it. Once installed, you execute it. And the first time you start it, it will ask for your Reallusion credentials to log in. You can go ahead and log in. And from there on, you will be able to auto rig your characters without having to log back in every time that you start up the program. Okay, so in Actor Core AccuRig, we are going to need to import our character file. So the FBX or OBJ, whatever you have. Remember that we have exported an FBX. So we can go ahead and drag and drop it here, or you can just browse to the file. Remember that the character needs to be in T pose or A pose, preferably. They also support the scan pose, but if you go with T pose or A pose, there will be no problem. Next, they support also multi mesh and accessories. But in this case, since we already used no accessories and no multi, multi mesh in Mixamo, we are going to use the same character so everything is the same either in Mixamo or in Actor Core. So we don't have discrepancies. We can go ahead and drag and drop the FBX and AccuRig will load it up. The first thing that we need to check is that the white line is flush in the middle of the character. You can go ahead and rotate the character to check that that is the case. You can see that everything looks okay. You can rotate it as much as you want and you can change the center line either with the slider or from the interface. Well, once we are done, we can go ahead and go to the next step, which will be rig body. Okay, so we click on it and actor core AccuRig is going to start uh, auto-rigging for us. It's going to guess where the joints should be, but usually there will be errors. So we will need to correct it manually. So you have the window on the top right where you can see examples of joint placement and you have to imitate, try to uh, put it in the same place as in the image. As you can see here, I needed to correct the head joint. And once it is more or less OK, we can go ahead and do the same for the rest of the of the joints. So you can see that it should be centered and the neck should be a little up instead of down. The important thing here is not the circle size, but where the white dot is. So Circles can overlap and there is no problem, but the white points should not and they should be placed correctly where the image shows. Here I can switch the neck a little up and probably a little to the left. So it's closer to the, um, to the image. You can pan with the right button and you can rotate with the left mouse button you should uh, see that everything is looking good from all angles because we are working in 3D with three rotations. We can turn on symmetry to be able to locate one joint and if the character is symmetric, the other part of the character, the right part, should work okay. Let's place the shoulders. This is quite important because with the shoulders, if we don't do it correctly, you're going to see the character slouch or shoulders look weird. 
We corrected also the elbows and the wrist. We are now placing the groin. You should place it uh, so that the accessories are not affected. So we should place the pelvis down from the red line so the accessories are not stretched. Let's correct also the knees. And once we have the knees, we can go ahead and deal with the ankles and the feet. As you can see, uh, everything is quite straightforward. You should look at it from multiple angles. You can switch the opacity so you can see better the, the model, the mesh. And once you are satisfied, you can go ahead and go to the ankles. Again, you can see that I am following the reference image on the top right. And you can see that with symmetry, placing them is quite easy. The feet you need to look down apart from, from the side. And again, with the ankles, more or less the same thing. Since this is a character with heels, the ankles are going to be way more up than down but more or less it should work like that. As you can see, maybe we should uh, place the toes a little um, further back, but as is right now, it should work more or less okay. So once we are satisfied with our edits, we just need to know that if we wanted to mask, for example, a joint, if we were holding something in the hand and we would not want to, to rig the hands, you can activate mask and deactivate symmetry for isolating one of the hands and it not being rigged since it would be holding something or maybe you have like a limb that has no uh, real fingers and things like that. So you could mask it out. So next we need to take a look at midpoint placement. This will be important when adjusting joints from the side. Usually front part in the midpoint placement works better than whole mesh. So we can look from the side and arrange using midpoint, midpoint placement in the front part instead of in the whole mesh. For example, for characters that are not humanoid, you may need that. So once we have uh, all of these placed correctly, once we are satisfied, we can click on rig the right hand. That will take us to the right hand rigging. We can again correct according to the reference. Remember that you can choose the number of fingers. If you don't, the points may be placed in wrong positions and they may look really weird. I'm going to correct now all the points more or less and once we are done we will be able to rotate the thumbnail joint. You can see it with that uh, small gizmo. It should be perpendicular to the nail of the thumb so we just need to adjust for that. You can see right now it was not. So we can go ahead and place it correctly and more or less look at it from different angles because uh, 3D rotations can be um, quite uh, tricky. So go ahead and look at it from multiple angles and when you are satisfied you can click on rig left hand, mirror to the left hand the joints from the right and this will make it quicker to rig that left hand because we will have the starting point of the right hand. You can adjust the nail position again, the nail joint, and you are going to see that more or less I'm trying to make it again perpendicular to the thumbnail. And once you are satisfied with the rig, again I could move the joints but right now it, it is quite close to, to the other hand and it, it should be more or less correct. So we can go ahead and click on um, finalize character when we are ready. If by any chance you want to go back and fine tune what we have done up until now, you can use the buttons on the left panel. And now we can see the poses with our auto rigged character. As you can see, I've chosen the female pose, the female rest pose. 
and now we should imitate the pose on the top right with the pose offset uh, controls. As you can see right now, some things are clipping and I can modify them using the pose offset uh, sliders. You can mirror them so it is easier to fine tune the poses when you are using symmetric characters. And again, I'm going to also modify the leg poses, the thigh poses, sorry, because right now it's not close to the reference image. So we need to try to imitate that rest pose that we see up there. You can see that it has the legs closer up. So I'm going to do that. Minus two looks better. The arms are not as close as in the reference pose, but that's because we don't want them to clip with the, with the accessories. So again, I can try to reduce a little bit the arm position so it's closer to the mesh but you can see that I cannot go much further or it will clip. So right now we have a pose that looks okay, the shoulders look okay, you have to watch out for that and if needed go back to the body rig but usually if you place correctly the joints in the body rig face you are going to get cool shoulders and the shoulders are going to work fine. Again, now we can test out, for example, the feminine walking animation. You can see that it looks amazing, it looks really good. The legs look good, the feet look good, everything looks okay. The accessories are not being deformed, they are just moving with the hip. If we place correctly the groin and the thighs joints, it's going to work well. If not, the, the accessories can be deformed when the character walks and you don't want that. Next, we are going to check the hands. Let's see if our hand rig was okay. You can see that everything is working pretty well. Maybe we should uh, make it not so, not so close. If we needed to go back and modify anything, you can check the body rig, the hand rig and everything, and you can modify anything at all. And then you go back to the check animation and that's that. We can also, before applying poses, before applying pose offsets, save the accurate data so we have the base post untouched just in case we need to go back and, and start from that. You can see that it loads also with the menu option above and we can also export an FBX with our rig character or upload it to Actor Core. On the bottom right, you also have the same controls. If we want to download motions, we need to upload it to Actor Core. That will make it available online in the web app. And we are going to be able to select the motions that animate our character. For that, we just need to go to our account and the My Rigged Actors uh, section. There we can select our avatar and we will see the preview animations on the right, as you can see right now. And we can now go to the motion section and look for whatever animations we want for our character. There are a lot of free animations, remember that. So go ahead and get them right now while they are free. I'm going to look for an idle animation for a female character. So Let's filter by female. Uh, right now we have uh, a couple of options. You can see that I have some that I do have. The others you have to pay for. It is what it is. But there are a lot of free animations. So right now I'm choosing the standby idle or let's look at another one just in case. Let's see how it looks. Looks fine without the root motion. It's going to give us problems. As you can see, it will slide. And solving that with a scripting is going to be difficult. So let's go ahead and download this idle position, but with root motion. You can choose our character. And next, you choose the texture size. You can keep original. We will do the shading apart from there. So mm, don't worry about that. Embed those textures so you can see the character and check the zero root animation and target application Unreal and 30 FPS. Next, we can click on download 
And with that, we will start downloading our animation to our hard drive. It's going to be a zip file, which will contain two items. On one hand, it will have the actor, so our character in FBX format and with the skeleton, the auto-rigged skeleton. And on the other hand, we will have the motion, which does not have an, an skeleton incorporated. So you will first need to import the actor after unzipping the contents. You can go ahead and drag and drop the FBX with the character in Unreal Engine. Remember to check that the skeletal mesh is activated. Use T0 as ref pose. If not, we will have warnings and it will look weird. Next, you can go ahead and don't check import animations because it's not needed. There are no animations in the actor file. And last but not least, you can check that we can create the materials automatically, import all, and we should see our character right there without warnings and without anything. Right now, we just need to go ahead and import the motion. So the folder with the motion. Next, drag and drop the FBX with the animation. Here, we need to check some, some things. You need to go to animated time and use default sample rate. If not, um, the animation will not work properly. So be careful. It gives us a warning, but disregard it. It's okay. I've, as you can see, imported the animation and you can see that it will work properly. So let's go ahead and see our results. We have side by side the animations from Mixamo and Actor Core, and you can see that both of them look quite nice. Nothing is clipping, everything is working properly, and we can see on the left the actor core animation, on the right the mixam animation. On the left we have root motion, on the right we have script motion, so animations in place. But you can see that both look amazing and both have been really easy to apply. You can see that the actor core one, in terms of the shoulders and so on and so forth, it's looking better. Well, so that has been it for this video. As you can see, Actor Core AccuRig is quite powerful when it comes to auto rigging. Where Mixamo falls short, you can try out Actor Core AccuRig and it may be the tool for you. Try it out and let me know how it went in the comments below. As always, if you have liked the video, go ahead, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other in the next videos. Let's go.